This is the Mississippi River, the living, breathing lifeline of America that built one of the greatest nations on Earth. But how does these muddy and murky waters make a billion dollars every single day? Let's find out in this episode of Stories Across. You see, the Mississippi is the second largest river in North America that flows right through the heartland of the United States. It also marks a dividing line that determines the American West and the East of the United States. The Mississippi originates from Lake Itasca in northern Minnesota and flows down to the Mississippi Delta in the state of Louisiana out to the Gulf of Mexico. The river flows 2,340 miles or 3,770 kilometers towards the south, passing through 10 U.S. states. And when combined with around 250 tributaries of the main stem of the Mississippi, the combined water drainage crosses through 32 states, which means if we sail in these widespread network of interconnected waterways, we have a direct accessibility to more than 60% of all U.S. states, which also means if we are able to transport people and other commercial goods to and from these water drainage systems, it can be done without much obstruction, thanks to the natural gift the United States has in the form of the Great Mississippi River. And this river passing through the heart of America as a result of the landmass formation of the country. The American West is mostly dominated by the Rocky Mountains, stretching from the state of Washington in the northwest all the way down to the state of New Mexico in the southwest. And the eastern United States has the Appalachian Mountain Range stretching from the state of Maine in northeast all the way down to the state of Alabama in the southeast. These two large mountain ranges to the west and the east creates a sloped plain and forms a large flat basin in the center, so naturally all the water flowing from either side would naturally flow towards the center of the basin, exactly to the point where the Mississippi River main stem flows. And all these tributaries carry huge amounts of water, rocks and minerals to the Mississippi, making the land very fertile for agriculture, and the mineral-rich water creates ideal conditions to nurture and harbor aquatic life. And because most of the Mississippi flows through this basin, the river is relatively flat, without many natural obstructions like waterfalls and difficult terrains like the Colorado River. Such topographic features of the Mississippi River makes ideal conditions for using the river as an unobstructed channel of transportation. All these features of the Mississippi River have remained similar for ages, and the resources it provides have been used by human establishments for centuries. During the mid of the Industrial Revolution, realizing the frequent and important use of the river, in the year 1802, the United States Army formed the United States Army Corps of Engineers, which was tasked with maintaining a navigation channel on the Mississippi River. Under the same task, multiple dams and locks and levees were constructed on the river to control the flow of the river. In the year 1811, when America was building up, but still relatively young, first paddle steamboat named Orleans appeared on the Mississippi River that almost instantly became operational to transport people, mail and freight up and down the river. This was a historic time that marked the use of the Mississippi Water Highway in modern America. In the succeeding years, the number of steamboats grew from just 1 to 1200, including cargo freights between 1811 to 1825. As the number of freighters grew, the cost of transporting people and cargo plummeted significantly. During the time, there were no roadways except for the slow railroads, which was significantly slower than the Mississippi waterways. As years went by, the engines became much bigger and much more powerful. Diesel-powered tugs and cargo barges replaced steamboats, which had extended range. New towns, businesses, warehouses, and factories started emerging along the banks, booming the trade and business in America. Gradually, the mighty Mississippi River became an economic overlord of the entire nation. After almost two centuries, the Mississippi has become one of the greatest commercial waterways in the entire world that not just only operates business domestically, but transports goods and services to different parts of the world as well. Today, the magnitude of trade and business has nearly exploded to remarkable numbers, generating more than a billion dollars of revenue every day. The economic profile of the Mississippi River is classified into two broad categories. 
The Upper Mississippi, which runs from its headwaters to its confluence with the Missouri River at St. Louis, and the Lower Mississippi, that runs from the confluence of Mississippi with the Ohio River all the way down to the mouth of Gulf of Mexico. According to the Upper Mississippi River Basin Association, the Upper Mississippi River generates a revenue of around $345 billion annually, out of which 81.7% comes from manufacturing, 7.2% from agriculture, 5.9% from tourism, and another 5.1% from these important sectors. Which when translated into employment generation, it supports over 1 million jobs. And the Lower Mississippi has a total revenue of more than $151 billion annually, supporting more than half a million jobs, out of which 106 billion comes from manufacturing, 15.5 billion from tourism, and another 29.5 billion dollars from these important sectors. So if you combine the total revenue of Upper Mississippi and the Lower Mississippi, the entire river generates over 496 billion dollars annually and provides over 1.5 million jobs to the American people. But there is a looming problem. The Mississippi is drying. Up and down the Mississippi River Basin, below average rainfall has constricted one of the country's major economic thoroughfares. In Tennessee, boats that were once floating in water are now locked in mud. Barges are being slowed and stranded at the worst possible time. By the end of the year 2022, the water levels dropped to a historical low. So low indeed that a 108-year-old shipwreck resurfaced near Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In other parts of the river, the levels were so low that barges got stuck in sandbars, causing traffic jams over the river. This impacts navigation to a varying degree, otherwise quite smooth, and renders significant loss to farmers, transportation, and other manufacturing companies. Climate change doesn't only affect the normal operation of the Mississippi, but it also affects supply of clean water to farms, cities, towns, and manufacturing units. This hampers everything from jobs to crop yields to energy production. And the people and the places that are not directly affected by the Mississippi could still feel the domino effect of climate change in terms of rise in price of goods and other essential commodities and city municipalities releasing advisories to have a more conservative approach towards using water in day-to-day -day use. The Mississippi River is like one of the most important arteries that flows through the heart of America. And protecting it is not only the job of local government and conservation departments, but is a duty of every citizen whose livelihoods may or may not directly depend on the Mississippi, but cumulatively as a larger picture, it affects most of the citizens living in the United States. The idea of saving every drop of water and using it mindfully can really help preserve our natural resources so that everyone can reap its benefits for generations to come. This is Stories Across, and thank you for watching.